Hey, what's up? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noel Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. What's up, everybody? I'm Pedro S. Creative Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share three printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is, the pro this is the project. This is the show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for you folks. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It's, uh, it's a good morning here. <laughs> Let's kick off the show with today's coupon code. It is Pi Portal Case. Portal Case. Huh. That's the coupon code. It's a Portal Case. If you guys want to check out anything in the Adafruit shop, this will get you 10% off your order. We have some freebie deals going on. If you go to adafruit.com slash free, you can find out all the details and tiers for the lovely products that are for free when you buy more stuff. Same day delivery is an option in New York City. So if you're in New York and you need your stuff the same day, you have that as an option. Circuit Python meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Check it out, get to uh, sit in and listen in to the awesome devs that are working on Circuit Python projects from the community and more. This week's uh, episode was really, really awesome. Got a chance to listen to PT, Phil, and Lamar about all the awesome things that are going on in the Python and Circuit Python community in a couple leaks and things. So check out the meeting. It's on Discord every, uh, like I said, Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, but get Discord servers open 24 seven. A lot of folks are there. Um, we hit a milestone that was like a lot of numbers. Very, very awesome. We thank you guys so much for hanging in there and contributing and helping people out. When it comes to newsletters, we have a few of them. Adafruitdaily.com is your daily dose of content in your inbox. You have to opt into that. If you want to uh, register, subscribe, go to adafruitdaily.com. Adafruit.com slash newsletter is the newsletter. This happens once a week. It's product focused and it's called the new, new, new newsletter with the song and everything. Jobs.adafruit.com is a free gift to the community if you are looking for people. We are getting a lot of nice uh, companies, maker companies that are looking for awesome maker folks. The new CircuitPython category, there's people looking for people with CircuitPython skills. Check it out. Make yourself a maker profile. And if you are looking for makers, check out jobs.adafruit.com. This week's project it's a Pi Portal project. It's on the Learn Guide. It is a 3D printed case for the Pi Portal um, and the Adafruit PowerBoost 1000C. If you're looking for a way to make a portable Pi Portal, a portal <laughs> Python <laughs> portable <laughs> pocket. <laughs> I'm out of steam, man. <laughs> so here's what I got for you folks. Um, this is the same case. I made a little uh, stand for it. It uses a GoPro knuckle and two screws here. It's kind of nice. The idea is that you can uh, make a portable <laughs> project with the Pi portal. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Stuff. So uh, the faceplate can be swapped out. It's a snap fit case. There's like a frame, there's a backing and a front piece that can be swapped out for different shapes and such. This is running the YouTube viewer counter demo that we have available on the GitHub repo. It features a spot for a mini oval speaker. You got the holes right there. This right here is a little micro USB port and you can recharge the battery that is inside this case. Yeah, again, this is a 3D printed uh, uh, kind of a GoPro style uh, tripod. And we're using uh, this little screw here to, to act as a, as a tripod screw adapter. So this is a little D-ring, as we like to call it. We carry these in the shop too. These are great for fixing tripod standard stuff, but it's a bit of a mix of a, of a couple fasteners and things to make that. But this is really the main piece of it. It's a nice little box for your Pi portal. There's the back again. There's the screw. It's actually just a threaded hole. So I used a screw tap, a quarter 20 size screw tap to make the threading for that. Which works out pretty well. On the side here, we have access to the micro USB port for the Pi portal, which will let you program and power the device. Over here is the micro SD card slot. 
So you can put in a micro SD card slot in there and get extra storage. So the part about snap fit is that it's sometimes it can be pretty difficult to to open. So we sell and like this little tool here. It's called the spudger. It has two flat tips. One's a little bit more narrow, but these flat tips can be very useful for prying things open like our snap fit cases. Just one snap in the corner and the rest is easy to come out. So here's what it looks like um, on the inside of the, of the face plate. There are these kind of uh, these little shapes here that kind of have a sort of a chamfer here. It almost looks like a chevron. chevron. And then on the edge of the case, you have these nubs that kind of protrude out and uh, the face plate catches those and stays uh, locked into them. We got four fasteners here to secure uh, the mounting tabs from the Pi Portal in here. I just want to give it a good shake. Um, and yeah, the point is, uh, let's say you wanted to have something a little bit more straight cut like this one. Snaps fits like that. Or you could go with this kind of YouTube one that has the bubbly look to make it look more like a TV. One of the cool uh, ideas that we got cooking around is to make a bit of a key pad uh, for this guy and make a great stream deck. And uh, so I thought I'd make this cut out here with a, with a three by four kind of grid so that uh, you have a much more tactile uh, feel when you are touching uh, buttons, for example. So uh, that is something that is in the works right now to get uh, a nice kind of HID, USB HID device. It'd be really cool. I'm gonna keep this open for now. So I got a lot of different uh, snap fit covers there. We can swap them out. And you can do different shapes too, right? This is a different uh, style that we're looking at, like different shapes. Maybe you have something you really want to have it themed out. So maybe a, a clover because of St. Paddy's Day or something. So you can imagine that this is this could be different buttons here, and this could control something with four different inputs. So uh, yeah, this is uh, it's kind of a neat idea to have a replaceable faceplate that you can make custom shapes that tailor your project comes off there. And when it comes to the back, um, let's see if I can get this without, no, I need one. Let's just pop that out. So here's the, the back plate. As we open it, you can see what's inside. Bit of an update. This is a 2000 milliamp LiPo battery. It's double the, just about double the size of the 1200 milliamp LiPo battery that is linked in the guide. This uh, framing here is, is uh, something that we worked on a couple weeks ago and we wanted to make this little custom frame so that we could attach and have more mounting points uh, for different PCBs like this Adafruit PowerBoost 1000C. So you can see that's there. You have plenty of room for a bigger battery like this 2000 milliamp LiPo battery. This mini panel lights, uh, this mini panel mounted toggle switch is just the darnest, cutest, nicest thing. You get really Nice, uh, we would call it tactile feedback, I guess, from this honking switch. So I like it. There's also room uh, here for external uh, stemma connectors to and wiring here. So you have access to that. And then the speaker is the only thing that gets mounted to the back here. The speaker itself has like a little protective backing. It is very loud too. Uh, it has a nice sticker backing that, uh, that has an adhesive on the front plate. So it sticks in there. Also has this little holder here, which has this uh, friction fit there. Um, so that's what the frame looks like. You can see right through it. It prints without any support material. So you can have at it. To close it up, we'll just make sure that uh, all, the, all the wires tend to kind of shape themselves out here, this area here, and the speaker just kind of goes over it. Well, there we go. It kind of looks nice without the frame. And of course, you have the tripod screw so you can mount it in all sorts of different ways. I think the YouTube one looks the best here. This kind of bubbly looking terminal shape looks really fun. So there you go. Let's look at the learn guide and kind of walk through the assembly a little bit. There is some wiring involved, but uh, the 
the stemma connectors on the Pi portal make it very easy to do so. So the home page just walks you through what the project is. This is the case dimensions. If it's going to fit on your printer, you're going to need at least 100 by 100 millimeters or four by four inches if you are Imperial units. Here's the power boost. It has a charging rate of one amp an hour. So if you have a 2000 milliamp, it'll take about two hours to fully charge the battery, which isn't bad at all. Here's all the parts you need to build this project. Um, you actually don't need the power boost or the battery if you plan to plug it into the wall. So there's that. But if you do want a power wall, here's how to do it. Additional fasteners, um, I'm using the M25 uh, nylon screws that we carry in the shop. We have a nice kit that has standoffs, nuts, everything you need uh, to, to kind of create like a nice mounted PCB. Silicone covered wires are really nice. We've got a three pin JST, connect, uh, JST cable that it makes it really easy to plug into any of the stemma connectors on the back of the Pi Portal. Pi Portal's out of stock, but be sure to sign up for email notifications um, when they are, when we manufacture them. Working on it real soon. Power Boost is in stock along with the battery, mini oval speaker, the toggle switch, that JST connector I was talking about, some extra wire, and the standoff kit. Those are all the parts that uh, you might want to pick up for making this project. 3D printing page is going to help you see all the, all the files, download the file link, um, some slice settings, pretty standard stuff. You can print it as is. It's already oriented in the correct orientation. Here's a little CAD assembly of how the parts all fit together. When it comes to wiring, I got a little circuit diagram to show you how to wire uh, voltage out from the power boost into the, the, the Pi portal. Um, the, LiPo batteries that we carry in the store, the 3.7 volt ones, all work with the power boost. So um, check those out if you want to use a different side battery. That's cool. I would recommend something that's no, no smaller than 500 milliamps. That doesn't really last a lot, so I would say the 1200 is probably the lowest you want to go. Wiring up the uh, slide switch, we just kind of walk you through it. There's some nice photos of how to wire it up. Um, wire links and stuff like that as well, testing it out, and here's the final uh, circuit, right? You got a slide switch, toggle switch, wire to the power boost, battery connects to the power boost. Power boost has a three pin JST connector that only uses two wires for power and voltage, voltage and ground, uh, that connects to the back of the Pi portal. It's pretty simple and cute, the little Shiba there. When it comes to assembly, um, there's a nice order of operations you want to do, right? So you want to start off with um, securing the PCB, the, the power, power boost PCB to this little 3D printed bracket. Sort that out and then that gets um, secured to the frame where the Pi portal also gets secured to the frame. A little bit of an order thing. You got to put the frame, you got to put the PCB in and then the frame goes on top and the screw goes through the standoffs through the mounting tabs and uh, yeah, very cool. And the panel mounted switch is really easy. You just panel mount that. I would recommend doing that first. Again, order of operations, you want to do things linearly because if you put the PCB in, then you can't secure the toggle switch. <laughs> All right, so that this is really detailed and breaks down exactly. We got some GIFs as well, animated GIFs on how to close it and things like that. There we go. I just want to run through that really quick. It's kind of self-explanatory and the photos really do a nice job of showing you exactly how it's wired. Sweet. I even have a note here about how to open it with the spudger tool. I also link to the spudger tool in the overview page. Which you're going to need a couple if you tend to lose those. Like we do. Yeah. I got two of them. They're nice. Magnetic. All right. So that's the project. You can check out the actual learn guide for the Adafruit Pi Portal for um, a pin, a, a guide walkthrough of the pins, components, um, the, the CircuitPython libraries, setting it up, getting uh, the ESP32 firmware updated, all that sort of stuff is going to be documented here in the Pi Portal guide. There you go. And I, I suppose if you click on the if you click on the link, the actual page, it will show you all the learn guides that we currently have for the Pi Portal. So we have a portable Pi Portal, uh, a quote book from John Park, trophy from John Park, 
another trophy, a lot of trophies, which is awesome, and some data logging stuff using Adafruit IoT. So we are working on lots of different guides for the Pi Portal. More to come, and there's lots of code already available on the, uh, the Learn GitHub, github.com slash Adafruit slash Adafruit Learning System Guides. If you just search for Pi Portal, these are, wow. It's like one a day getting added here. Very awesome examples. They work right now. So uh, if you're waiting on yours, just be happy to know that there are stuff that you'll get even after you get it. Very cool. That's this week's project. Um, if anybody has any questions, Pedro, you've probably been answering just links and things to mm -hmm. the products. Sweet. Yes, it's funny comments on um, the naming of the like the um, initials for it would be PPPPT or <laughs> 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 insert raspberry noise here. That's fun. Yeah, Pip. That was my code name, PYP. <laughs> Pip. Let me Pip check out the Pip Discord that. for all of the other links and really cool stuff everybody's discussing about. Yeah. Oh, Bill Binko just posted a really nice slide switch. Oh, this is nice. This has two mounting holes. How awesome is that? Yes, definitely want to switch out yeah. the little slide switches that we have. Every time I mount one in, it, the tolerance is a little bit too uh, high. It always breaks apart on me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to a little bit of a shot talk. I really want to share Bill Binko's uh, <clears throat> He's <here>. dubbing <clears throat> the cheese wedge. Actually, I just added the cheese part. He's just calling it the wedge. This is a really cool pie portal <clears throat> case for making like a nice little... Uh, angled view of your display. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, only sir. skimmed really quick the discussion I was having with Lamar about what uh, some of the devices that are used in AT like this, and they cost about like seven grand for something that, My goodness. this is just gonna be like 50 bucks in the case. So definitely a nice uh, alternative, programmable, all that. He's working on some really cool projects for that. Yes. Just wanted to show off this awesome design that he made. Of course I had to print it out in what looks like yellow, but it's really like a green. It's like a fluorescent green. Yeah, it's not the best not favorite color, for, but hey, we needed yeah. to print it out. It was printed on the Prusa. Did Does use have, the um, snap fit design that uh, we know and love. Yes. And there's quite a bit of room in here for some batteries and things like that. Uh, one of the first things that we're gonna do uh, edits for is, uh, we usually have like the chunkier USB cable, so we'll go ahead and update that. Uh, simple fix and we've got a lot of ideas for adding um, like you were saying the grid layout It'd Be really cool for adding like buttons on there. This is already available on our thing so you can download this and modify it Now uh, we'll probably really go in there and play around with uh, adding some features to this, but this is really cool Yep Completely customizable like how you can get your name on there and prints in about two hours Very nice design Oh, I am a fan. Very cool. Let's see if I can get that on. Yeah, you insert at an angle. Yeah, right. right at the bottom there, and blam. It's not too long. Awesome. Okay. Good job. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you had some stuff to say yeah, about it. Yeah, sure. So I, here's a little photography tip. Oh, if yeah. If you are uh, trying to film a, a screen, you get a lot of glare and things. So this is, a, this is called a reflector. It's black on one side. It's got this kind of... Uh, silvery color on the other side. Basically, it's used, uh, it can be used for two different things. So if we just put this over um, the camera here, you can see that you can you get rid of the glare really easy just by putting this thing up here. Um, you could use a sheet of paper or whatnot, but this is really nice because it's this big, right? It's a little bit bigger than... Uh, so if you're taking photos of your projects and you want to get rid of the glare, one of the best ways to do it is to get yourself a reflector. These things kind of fold in like that and they can be stored away in little pouches and things. I got this on Amazon. I think it's like a medium-sized one. It could also be used to bounce light, to give light. If I can mm. find the light, where is it? Somewhere. Anyway, you can really destroy your photos see how you're bringing light in there. <laughs> Just a 101 photography thing. I mean, it's pretty simple, but it might be useful for folks. So if you are looking to photograph your displays and they're super shiny and Especially with a lot of Pi, Pro, Pi Portal mm -hmm. projects come out, you're definitely going to want something like that. Yeah. Or just wear a black shirt I if think you're standing so. in front of it. Yeah, the <laughs> hard part is, like, where do I put this? 
if I'm showing and telling it, well, you gotta figure that one out yourself. A lot of the- They have C-stands that have like these little arms <coughs> It is called the C-stand. Why is it called the C-stand? We don't know, but it's called the C-stand. I remember it's watching a video about it. I just can't remember what it was. See, see, there's the stand. <laughs> <clears throat> so this is it, you know. It also has a zipper in here so you can change out this color for- Oh yeah, there's, uh, there's more like colors gold, on the inside. There's a gold, a gold color, and a white, white color. And, and then a little flag here to hang it up here. And this this part right here that I really like is for actually diffusing light. So this actually lets light pass through. There you go. So, so it'll you, soften your light. Exactly. Get rid of yeah. the harder shadows. Mm -hmm. We used to do this. Or we still do this. <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of why we got hired. <laughs> yeah, that's why we do this. So. So a nice little photography tip for all you posting those wonderful pie projects or any display or any project that is reflectant. Even our table is like super it reflective. Is, yes. You have to constantly so. use that in conjunction with polarizers, which I believe we've touched on in other episodes. Uh, yeah, let's, start, let's just start with that. <laughs> polarizer, yeah. So there you go. Uh, that'll there's, be cheaper than a, a nice, polarizer. That's a nice little tip I hope folks can use. Sweet. All right. Um, Hmm. Jumping into what are we prototyping? Yes, it's Pager's turn. Continuing on, last week we talked about the Pi Portal View Master. This is a digital view master that PT's been wanting to do for some time now. Of course, there's a Pi Portal attached to the back. We've got our stomach cables powering in, acting as the button. On the inside, I'll show it off next week when we release it. There are two little contacts that are making that are touching each other when you bring the crank all the way down. You can kind of see it in there. I think I showed off the way that the mechanism is working last week. I'll show it again in its complete form next week. We have access to the power boost, which will recharge the 2000 milliamp hour battery inside. And then you have um, USB broken out there. You can actually wire, uh, reroute this to have it be USB-C maybe, but you can also use, use this for programming. So I have access to the SD card where all the images are living and the side switch, which we were making fun of <laughs> yeah. earlier. I wanted to do the, um, the one that you use, but it's definitely gonna poke out a little bit. The dots, the NeoPixel status LED shines very nicely through this pink color PLA. <laughs> Access to your reset button, not easy to get to, but you can still poke it, so you're not gonna accidentally restart sure. it. And then access to programming port if you ever need to use that. Uh, yeah, everything else is broken out. I chose not to enclose this. Um, no, I, like this I did look. notice that it did get a little warm, but that was only because I left it on for so long while filming. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can see on the side here, hey, little puppies. Little Shino. Uh, Shiba, excuse me. I think that's what we're gonna name our new dog. Shino. Shino. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All of the um, wires are <laughs> <laughs> on the outside to, you know, not to copy any other company to make uh, it a little, you know, I distinctive. We were, okay. <laughs> New partnership with Viewmaster now. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to add like that cut that they have, and I was like, eh, just to make sure we don't have any IP infringement there. I just kept it very simple. Have the uh, all the screws on the outside. Oh, I really like this design. Just having this cool little crank thing, uh, little mechanical part. I'll show the way that the spring is attached and all that yeah. next week super cool digital viewfinder pretty solid yeah. excellent that puppy yeah <laughs> turkey project all right let's go ahead and jump into community makes um shop yeah, talk let's do a real quick shop talk if you folks want to um Design something for the Pi Portal. We do have the CAD drawings available in different file formats. Uh, we have a GitHub repository of all of our CAD parts. It is a link in the description of this video, or you can go to github.com slash Adafruit and then search for CAD parts, and that will help you out. This includes all the components that are on board the PCB, gives you a nice representation of where all the parts are, um, and a little cutout for the display with some add-ons like the little micro SD card slot and things. So there you go. Uh, I need to release this source file. Thanks for reminding me, me. So uh, I need to do that. But this is a little cat animation of the things. Um, so not just the pipe portal, you got the, the mini oval speaker, you have the battery, the slide switch, 
and even things that aren't in here like a micro USB cable which can be helpful if you want to uh, make sure that you have proper clearances because micro USB cables tend to be pretty big and they can, they can be big, bigger than you think. Excellent, so there you go. This week on Community Makes, every Tuesday we do a 3D printed time lapse. We uh, look for designs in the community and we 3D print it. Sometimes it's fun stuff, other times it's useful stuff like this. This is a, uh, a sort of a deep tray for a, for a car, specifically a Tesla Model 3. It's called Deep Center Tray by Laird, Laird uh, Broadfield. Thank you Laird for sharing this on Thingiverse. It's a free download. It's a fairly large print. It fits, uh, you can fit your sunglasses in there. It has a bit of a mesh design mm -hmm. so you can see through it. You can fit lots of goodies in here. This yeah. really expands I was super impressed the with it. storage capabilities of your, uh, of your Model 3. This thing just slots in there. Hey, that's me. And uh, you get a lot of stuff because without it, you just have a big hole. <laughs> Just have a big An hole. even bigger hole with the release of the $35,000 um, base model three that just went on sale, I think like last week. Uh, you're definitely gonna need something like this. Uh, the first one that we were playing with was this really nice uh, shallow type one that holds like your garage door opener and like your uh, keys and things like that. But when this one came out, whoa, check out the size of that. Even still, there's like even more room that you can play with. So if you wanted to make this even deeper mm -hmm. and wider out, you could. The console is just that big. It just sort of rests on top. It has a little bit of a flange here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So That's that, what the uh, design features about. It just kind of stay there. It has a good fit, though. It doesn't jostle around when you're oh, no, it has zero to very 60 nice. in two seconds. But Yeah. And then I really like the um, hidden... Uh, storage down yes. here. You have, like There's you were some, saying, the mesh opening is, for here. Is this supports? It looks like no. Su uh, actually, yes, there was. I did yeah. use breakaway supports just for the bottom here. You can kind of see. I'll take these things out so you can see what the the overhang using uh, supports looks like. There you go. Now this is with a what nozzle? This is with a 0.8 nozzle. Yeah. So this, these are some fat layers that it laid down. Mm -hmm. uh, it took about. Even still, it was like about 24 hours to print. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Just because when you're printing that big, you do, uh, or with the fatter uh, nozzle size, you do print a little bit slower. I believe it's like 30 or mm -hmm. 50 millimeters a second as opposed to like 80. There you go. So you are going to print a little bit slower. Uh, but there isn't an a alternative product that's being manufactured. Tesla does not sell one as of and yet. So you can. Tooling this thing would, you know. Oh my God, yeah. It's insane. The, that's a project. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's great that you can 3D print it. Sure, it takes a day, but look at that. There's no nothing else available for it yeah. at the at this point in time. And nice uh, storage options. And of course, you can modify this to whatever car. So it's just a nice idea for given inspiration. The way that the slots for holding some of your stuff is. Yeah. I didn't you know think of anything you know like that. Yep. For like the the gate opener or whatnot. What a great project for students in design school or something. Yeah. I would love to, to have had that. Like, hey, so awesome. make a, organize, a caddy or something. People mm -hmm. call them caddies and whatever. For your car, for your bike, for your locker, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be a Tesla Model 3. Yeah. It's just a nice practical mm -hmm. 3D print that should get you thinking that you have absolute power and control over your, your everything. Yeah. yeah. Everything you touch be modified so super sweet design this it's thanks again stuff. for releasing this yeah it's on thingiverse let's pull up the page here That's there it cool. is very cool oh you have one re they have one remix what does that look like remix what did they add to that I, it's not going to work because this light is absolutely oh. horrendous right now so yeah next one up we have what we just talked about, Bill Binko's uh, wedge box for the Adafruit Pi portal. Very awesome. Thank you for sharing it with us before uploading it. We got a chance to print it out and share it on the show. So we thank you, Bill Binko, for doing that and just being an awesome person. Next up, this we'll talk is about it. it next week as well, since I did oh, he, do a, a time lapse for this. So oh yeah, that's yeah, what next time week's time lapse, time -lapse yeah. will thank be. You. We have content. Yay. Remember the, uh, the Circuit Playground Express? We made a case for it, a couple of different cases. Uh, this person here on Thingiverse posted a photo of their lovely red DigiKey colored 
um, Circuit Playground Express. So we have a lot of cases for it. This is one of them. It's just the shape of a hexagon. This is a planter or a candy dish in the shape of a ghost from the awesome franchise Super Mario Brothers. Thank you for sharing that with us. Pie Portal. Oh my God, I can't stop saying Pie Portal. <laughs> the Pie Girl is a classic project, and this was uploaded about a day ago by Big Oz82 on Thingiverse. Thank you for sharing this with us. What a lovely build of the Raspberry Pi Game Boy Girl person. Very cool. Mini Raspberry Pi Notebook. Look at this thing. You remember you made this? 2015. Vintage. This is Vintage Pi project. <laughs> that is actually my next project. Yeah. Again, I can't click on it because... I know, I just tried clicking this. on... <laughs> I'll get back to I'm not complaining. I'm just the chat's you that, question uh, about the <laughs> last thing we showed off, but I can't load it. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Which one? The Pi Girl? No, the continue. Video? We'll get, get, it, get it at the end. Okay. Well, I have all of these links in the description of the YouTube video, mm -hmm. so you can, before I even talk about them, the links are already there. So that's good. That's it. <laughs> Thank you guys for sharing these projects. We really appreciate it. It's not easy to use the Thingiverse site, especially when it's so slow. This person actually uploaded like six times because the oh, site is so yeah. bad. <clears throat> yeah, so we are working Continue. on that. Yeah. It's obviously going to be the Pi Portal with one of our tiny little oh, look. keyboards right this here. Look Let's at the, how perfectly sized this is. I got an even better one. I'm so we're going to do the back. hinge. It looks so cute with this. Oh, I know. It looks like a little TV assembled. with the uh, antenna ish, there. Ish, ish. Um, Let's see, David Stells is saying, does the viewfinder, is it stereoscopic with lenses or is it just two holes for the eyes? We did talk about that in one of our meetings. The uh, PT wanted to you know, just have two images that would uh, be side by side, but then he was like, I don't know if we want to chop it up. You know, slice in half the 320 by 240 resolution is gonna be you know, half that size. So you could totally do that. I will do some tests on that. I didn't get any of the lenses, which, um, it's just to keep the, the build of material down low. Yes. Uh, but if you did get some lenses, you could definitely shrink that, the frame for this to make it a little bit more slimmer since it is this big so you can see the whole um, screen. But yeah, adding serious topic with the lenses on there is definitely something you could do. Yeah. Also, we have the an actual Viewmaster. It mm -hmm. does have these little plastic lenses. Yeah. Um, you and have they to are... break it though in order to kind yeah. of put them in there. Yeah, and it's all glued together. Yeah. The way I was f able to figure out how to get this little hit, uh, crank to work was just by looking on, on the, the inside. inside of it. Yeah. yeah. We tried to crack it open, but we're like, yeah, I don't want to break it. Yeah. Uh, the viewfinder one though, the images are all stereoscopic. Well, they're, they're like 3D or holographic, but it's only one image. Right. So I don't know how they did that. It's probably just the, the way they process the film that's on mm. the little diskettes. Maybe. So it's another way you can do that. Your question was from Bill. We did talk about this. He's saying that he loves the model of the Pi Portal, but it is a disrupted design. So you can't export anything that includes it as an F3D without yep. using the web. Yep. So if you know you a way have, to use I it. I know a way and I'd have to do it for every single project. Yep. Yeah, a right click on the linked component and say break link. That is the only way to export an F3D. Right click on the component, break the link. That's, that's just the yeah. way it is. It's gonna have to do it. And if you look inside of the, uh, of the Pi Portal component, you will see that maybe there is an extra component, like a header or something that's linked to it. So mm -hmm. you just have to break that link, give Fusion a second to get all those parts in there, I just exported the top and the um, the main base by just clicking yeah. on the, no, the no, body it, yeah. and exporting it I that really way. I really need to do some tutorial on it, it then, like a, just a dedicated five minute, here's mm -hmm. here's a couple projects and here's how I export them out. Actually, did I already do a video on that? I, I could. could. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, don't click on the, comp uh, I, I just click on the body and export yeah, that. Yeah, I like Pages' I technique. He, he just breaks the link Right as soon as I, as soon as I import it, yeah, because yeah, I always have to move something or, or reorient. I do too, so, yeah. Mm. Okay, cool. But again, you can, we can chat offline as well. Yeah. If we have a, a, something else going on there. People are saying the Viewmaster has two images. 
Do I have it close by? I could have sworn it was just a one. No, it's just one image. Man, the puppy is correct though. <laughs> <laughs> then Bill's saying the view master is the wrong shape on purpose to make sure yes. there's no IP stuff going on. Yeah. I mean, Especially we, with the movie coming out. We don't want people, lawyers coming yeah. after us. <laughs> Maybe we do. I mean, we do have some we really have good, some lawyers. good lawyers. But I'd rather, I'd rather use their. Yeah, I'd like to make this into else. a little terminal as well. Like a little. A little bit more bubbly, maybe make it look like a Fallout 4 terminal. Mm-hmm, uh -huh. yeah. That'd be neat. But there's like, wow. there's a lot of ideas that sure. we can now do with these, so yeah. cool. Hmm. Let's see, uh, there was other one. Where's the cup holders? Oh, there's cup holders. There's quite a few in the, the Model 3. There's two, four, five, six, seven cup holders in there. Oh, hey, it's Brian. Howdy from Ireland, he says. Oh, wait, no, there's Welcome. eight, nine. Yeah, each door has a cup holder. There's two in the front, two in the back. Are we talking about ton. cup holders? Yeah, somebody was asking about cup holders in the Model 3. Oh, okay. It's got a ton of cup holders. Too many cup holders. You can even stick cups inside of the trunk. Or, I'm sorry, the frunk. You have two trunks? <laughs> mm. Don't forget, folks, Pi Portal. Oh, gosh, I said it wrong. Portal case oh. is the coupon code. And then Brent. 10 was saying you can implement a wireless charger. That's what I was trying to load up. We did make a wireless charger for the Model 3 using Ninja Flex uh, for the mat. It actually made the design better because of the way that the little ledge that holds your phone onto the console is not big enough. Yeah. So we I'd love to modify show it to you, but I can't use the Thingiverse website. Let me load. see if I type in <laughs> Chi. Did you forget should. the Thingiverse site is terrible? I know. Oh, hey, look, they loaded. Okay, but not over here. Not what I want to load, though. <laughs> anyway. But you could check the learn guide. We've made wireless, a ton of wireless chargers, portable, matted. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a ton there. Excellent. There was one more question I wanted to get to. Oh, hey, look. To. Here's a, a, a video you did with your Snapchats of uh, installing it. Oh, yeah. I'm removing the smaller short one. You can see just how deep that, in that entire console, you have access to like reach your whole hand inside there and like. You could fit a firstborn baby in there, my goodness. Definitely good. You wouldn't want to. But. Uh, there's the wireless charger we were talking about, though. Uh, I did update the design. It should be up on Thingiverse, so it's dual. We're using two of the Qi um, yes. circuit boards that we have on there, and you can charge two phones, and then they have a USB on the back, so you, I actually route two more cables mm -hmm. so you can charge four devices at the same time. <laughs> which we need to a lot of time. Oh, we're, we're always traveling, so we always need to charge the iPad and everybody's phone and batteries and cameras and all that. Very cool. Yay. Yeah, this Definitely is great. Cool. Can't wait to use it. Kirby is uh, confirming that, yes, Viewmaster uses two images. Okay. Okay. And then David Sell is saying that, that, yeah, they're slightly different point of view. Oh, yeah, it's the parallax, the way that they do okay. the images. That's cool. There are programs that let you do that. If you have strabismus, like I do, that none of that works. <laughs> yeah. I can't see any 3D stuff. Forever. <laughs> Let's see. It's the smallest thin client I've ever seen, says Mr. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Certainly. What else? I think that is all. If you guys have any more questions, you can uh, re-ask them then. I'm just trying to quickly scroll through these. On Discord? On Discord is where all the chats will live forever. You can ask on YouTube too, but those will be deleted as. <laughs> Andy the, Calloway, that printer's noisy. You know it's not one. Right? <laughs> it's like the mower outside. I know, of course. This is mm -hmm. the day they decide to do that. Uh, we got a question, does VR work for you? We have not actually ever tried like a... It probably would. What are they called? I don't even know the names of them. But the... Just close one eye and be like, that's no way. <laughs> that's right there. <laughs> I can see through it. It's just... Yes, Magic Mirror is on the list. There's like this huge mm -hmm. mile long list of all these projects that we'll probably never get to because there's just so many. Yeah. The community will. That's what they know where to do. Yeah. Like, Bill, I wanted to make this little stream decker, but you did it, so I'm glad I don't have to. Yeah, huge help. Yeah. I mean, I spent a lot of time making the Pi Portal model, mm -hmm. so I knew people oh, yeah. were going to just go to town on it. But yeah, we'll get that export thing fixed out, fixed up. 
3 printed chainsaw, yes, not functional. I mean, the chain moves, but it doesn't cut. Yes, we have made a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the blade saw from mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this think show. I that's it, right? Yeah, tonight. all the candy makes, yeah. We'd love to see your projects, yourselves, and what you're working on. Come on by the show and tell. It happens today, every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Shortly after that, we get, to, oh, we get the pleasure of seeing Lamar and Phil chat for an hour about the latest products and the latest happenings of CircuitPython, Python on hardware, Adafruit stuff, open source hardware. It happens every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Please join us. There'll be another coupon code later tonight and tomorrow. But for now, Portal Case is it. Tomorrow is John Park's workshop. Tune in at 4 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday. Check, hang out with John Park. Hear some awesome tunes. Get some Make Code Minutes and more. Make Code Arcade Minutes as well. Mm -hmm. Very fascinating to see. Very awesome new platform that Microsoft created for making really cool games. I saw a really good example that we tweeted out a couple days ago. It's freaking awesome. Sweet. And of course, that's what we're going to base the new updated uh, Pie Girl projects on. Ooh, updated Pie Girl. If you've been following along closely to the uh, Last Night Engineer show, you would have seen the PCBs that Lamar and the team are working on for yeah. new game pads. My goodness. All right. Well, that's exciting. There's Be so sure to tune in tonight stuff. then and tomorrow, of course. For all that and more. For all that and more. Thank you guys so much for joining us again. Until next week, don't forget to make a great day. Bye, See folks. you next week.